Hi everyone, welcome to SVG Sports Tech On Demand. We are spanning the globe today. Literally, Nico, you probably don't understand the reference, but that's okay, it's Wide World of Sports. Nico Berdon, you're EVS CMO, you are in Belgium, in Liège, I believe. So how are you doing, first off? Very good, very good, thank you, hello everybody. Excellent, great to see you. And Mike, you are here with me on the East Coast, and then Kevin, I believe you're on the West Coast, I'm assuming. Yep. There you go, excellent, well, great to see you all. Uh, we're here to discuss extra motion, which is, been one of the more interesting product developments from EVS, um, a, a ton of them last year, actually, to be honest. So maybe one of many, let's call it. Um, do you want to give an overview, uh, Nico, of what extra motion is and why you think it makes a big difference in the replay market? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, actually, extra motion is, uh, is a new AI-based uh, super motion processing solution uh, from EVS, which is actually deployed uh, in the cloud as a service and which comes on top of existing uh, replay solutions uh, of EVS that are, of course, well known. Uh, the objective for us was in to introduce, as you know, we're always trying to find ways to, uh, to enable our customers to go a little bit further in the way to enrich uh, li their life stories telling with different types of uh, replay solutions. And actually, the extra motion is relying on the EVS, uh, what we call the VR mine, which is the, uh, the uh, artificial intelligence engine, which relies effectively on the methodology of uh, deep learning uh, based on an algorithm developed by uh, our team here in Liège which uh, enables to integrate uh, intra-frames in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a feed that is coming from a normal camera uh, feed or any types of uh, file video content to, uh, to process it in the cloud and actually create a super motion sequence uh, that can be made available in a, in a few seconds to the, uh, to the replay operators that's available for the, uh, for the, live, uh, for the live story. Activity. Excellent, very cool. So, so Mike, um, I, I believe uh, you and Kevin and uh, Alex from the EVS team, team at the Super Bowl last year was where I first saw this fancy. It was in a corner of the uh, of the office. Um, walk through, Mike, what this has meant to your team. Let's go back to the Super Bowl. You know, when, when you first kind of became aware of this and how it's kind of developed over the last year. Well, this is one we're pretty proud of because we worked on this with with EVS, and um, you know we. Uh, we both saw the potential of this technology. So yeah, we had it at our technology room at the Super Bowl as a real kind of proof of concept. And there are really two buckets that we thought were going to be um, highlighted by this technology. The first one is you're taking cameras that heretofore could not be super motion. And this could be tiny cameras in pylons, uh, in cars, as we'll see later, and, you know, goal cams, those types of things. So, so a lot of times those are some of the most dynamic replays. And my dad used to work for a company called BASF where they said that they didn't make the things that, that, that you use, they just make them better. Well, this makes the replays better. And by using the extra motion um, in these small cameras, it gives it the kind of dynamics that, frankly, our audiences are used to in, in, um, in, in the larger kind of more traditional uh, super modes. Then there's a second bucket, which we thought was useful, is that for all of our home run productions, our HRPs, as we call it, you know, super motion is kind of difficult, not impossible, but difficult to get back over, you know, uh, IP technology and, and whatnot. So we've been using it in our LA-based studio um, productions of like MLS and college basketball to achieve this sort of super motion kind of replay that is normally reserved for bigger shows. That's cool. So Kevin, can you walk through that a little bit as far as that workflow? Yeah, it, it um, it's evolved quite a bit. And, and honestly, it's um, gotten to the point where it, it's uh, used on every one of our, our HRP productions, you know, it, it's become that simple. Um, basically, uh, you know, a clip gets, you know, cameras are coming in, get recorded and the clip goes, it gets made. And, uh, we have a workflow where, uh, basically an operator applies, uh, I think for, uh, for the LA based, uh, system, it's, uh, a, a single star. And then that goes ahead and, uh, clips off or kicks off the workflow where it sends it to the cloud, has the processing and then it's restored to a page uh, on that same EVS server. Um, the whole process for you know a 10 second clip now 
is round trip under 45 seconds. So it's made vast uh, improvements and can we continue to see improvements with it? That's great. So, so Nico, walk me through, um, cause people may be intrigued by this, right? So how do they add this to their system? What is, what's involved there? Um, is there extra equipment that's deployed? Is this purely software-based um, and cloud-based? Actually, yeah, the, 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 the processing itself of the, uh, of, the, of the extra motion is effectively fully uh, cloud-based. So actually, uh, when effectively uh, the clip is sent to the cloud, so the, uh, the processing activity is fully managed into a cloud-based environment. Uh, the, 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 the thing effectively, you, are, you, have the, uh, you have the gateway between effectively the, the XC servers or the XTVR. Uh, and, 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 and this cloud environment, which is effectively based on the V8 Square, uh, which is this gateway platform that, uh, that, 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 that makes the link. Um, but but the, the beauty of the, of, the, of the evolution of what we, we worked on is actually, no, namely, we integrated into the new LSM VR uh, uh, remote controller, uh, really the, the, the keystroke which enables effectively the operators really to activate the process immediately from the remote controller. So when they have a, they have a, when, when they have a clip based on a normal camera frame rate or even, uh, even already a super motion, so they can create immediately uh, the, and launch a process from that, uh, from that key uh, into the screen of the, of the, of the, of the controller. So this is effectively the, 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 the process. We, we obviously wanted to uh, to start with a cloud-based environment to give the flexibility. So this was one of the, uh, the objectives that we wanted to give. So we understand that, of course, this enrichment into the uh, the, the, the the production is actually important, but it's also ad hoc. Uh, so they don't want to force extra deployment of equipment, but really give the ability for our customers to benefit from the existing infrastructure. And, and have effectively it being deployed in a very, very flexible way. So that's why we decided to go into this direction. Excellent. So, so Mike, I wanna ask you a production question because this sounds like this is a really cool tool, right? And you know, it reminds me of like maybe the eighties when DVEs first came about and every director and producer was like, we're gonna do DVEs on every move, right? And all those shows. So how do you, I mean, what's been the reaction from the producers and the directors as far as, cause I can see them being like, we wanna use this all the time on, you know, so how do you kind of, Rain, do you have to rein them in, or they, do they really understand the process and what this means? I, I, I do they understand the process? Unsure, <laughs> um, but uh, the, it's it's it, the, the the good thing about this workflow is that you don't, as a producer director, I don't think you need to, um, you know, that you just need to understand that um, there is a slight turnaround time. Like Kevin said, it's getting better all the time, but there is processing involved usually good as a sort of a second replay, bump to break, like that kind of thing um, as well. And, you know, what we find in, in NASCAR, where you get the types of clips that, you know, you'll see that we had a, a great one in Talladega where Joey Logano um, kind of was in a nasty crash in turn three and kind of went over the uh, car of uh, Bubba Wallace. So, the camera itself was a visor cam that he had on his helmet and you literally see the, the car go over and the replay was extraordinary, even in regular motion, but then you put it in super motion. What happens is, and I was listening to the director at the time was just like saying, okay, slow, 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 slow. Now, normally in a, um, you know, 5994 replay, you get a fair amount of motion blur in this case, the operator was able to go as slow as they wanted to kind of kind of examine exactly what happened. And, and, and that was um, a, uh, a fantastic, uh, a fantastic example of, 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 of what uh, extra motion can do. Now the director didn't have to say, Hey, put that in extra motion. I mean, although I have heard them say that the operators now are getting used to the workflow such that it just happens that they know that it's there and they've got it in their mind that, you know, in a few seconds, it'll be uh, in their folder and they can, you know, queue it up as a, as a, as a first or second replay. Um, and then Kevin kind of talk about some of the other uses that we found for it in, in MLS, right. Kevin with the sort of the reaction and emotion shots is also. Yeah. MLS for us is primarily one of those, those HRP sports and, you know, you don't necessarily have, you know, the commercial breaks, you don't have, you know, the, the bumps and that sort of thing. But what they were able to do is um, going into halftime, coming out of halftime, they're able to put together an emotion package 
which was all based off of clips that went through extra motion, all uh, replays and reactions to, to the various things that happened. And it was really a, a, a different use case for it than we had seen before, but was still really compelling. You know, it, it was one of those things that, you know, it was like, wow, that, that really is a difference. This is enhancing the broadcast, which is what we're looking to do. Sure. And I guess, I mean, look at the World Cups, for example, obviously, you know, HBS and FIFA, a lot of big, big on those sort of emotional shots of fan of player reactions, fan reactions. So this really kind of lends a lot more as opposed to saying we have to deploy these five cameras to get these kind of shots. Now they can really kind of, their cameramen can have a lot more and women can have a lot more freedom, right? I'm guessing as far as what to shoot and, and how it gets processed. Yeah, I think what I would say the true testament to extra motion, one of our directors who uh, does HRPs for us and then does uh, local baseball, uh, apparently called up uh, EBS and asked for a license for extra motion. Um, and they were trying to figure out, how, how did you even hear about this? Uh, and it was because he was working with us on college basketball and uh, college football and had seen what what it could do and wanted it for those broadcasts that's cool yeah so so nico let's go commercially um how is this available what what kind of licensing is it is it on an event basis is it a, a monthly basis being sorted out still so actually so so in so in the process of uh, of commercialization of the uh, of the solution so we are uh, for timing uh, in the last phase of the uh, uh, the launch so uh, the official launch is that we're expecting in a, in a few weeks from now so uh, we work with a uh, with a limited number of customers and of course uh, Fox Fault has been the, uh, the first one uh, to uh, to deploy and experiment it in different environments as uh, it was mentioned by Mike and, and Kevin um, the the deployment itself in the uh, the, the way we are uh, the way we, we we present the model is actually based on a uh, as a service uh, model so uh, and we put in place for that uh, a model that is called credits EVS credits so effectively where customers have the ability uh, to use a web interface to uh, book a certain number of credits uh, that they can use in advance that they book in advance and consume uh, on the fly during their production. So effectively, and actually their credits are consumed depending on the number of operators using the ExoMotion service. So this is actually the way, and it is extremely easy to, uh, of course, predict, kind of anticipate the number of uh, you, you know, the usage you will have, but also the, the usage that you have done over the over, over a game. So which makes this kind of uh, solution extremely flexible uh, for, for our customers. That's great. Great. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Stay safe and uh, see you all soon. Thank you, Ken. Thank you again. Bye-bye.